Hey everyone, this is Trinity Precision Transmission and welcome back to the channel. So, first of all, Cody has got the Dirty Bird practically all the way back together. We've got a lot of work to do to it still, but that's besides that point. We've got a lot done, it's a lot of work, and we're going ahead, we're going forward. We're not taking it apart no more unless we're putting the motor in, right? That's right. Right. Okay, so what we got is we got All Reds construction vehicle in the house. We did a video on it. I tore it down, I built it, and Cody installed it. We got it in the vehicle. Looks really good. This thing lives out in the field, guys. I mean, it's like really, really, really bad. So um, we've done all the bells and whistles of this thing. Um, I mean, you can imagine, we've done it to it. So looks really good. It's working nice. Got quite a bit of miles on it already. We're gonna drive it still, get some more miles on it to make sure that it's good for our customer so they can ensure a safe ride. So let's go over to our other vehicle. We've got a, that was a 6L90. We've got a 6L80E transmission, 6L90E, 6L80E transmission in the house here. It's got a 5.3 in it. This gentleman is from Oklahoma. His name is Giovanni Gonzalez. Um, we appreciate you very much, sir. He does a bunch of, a little bit of trail riding, a couple things. Uh, doesn't plan on doing a lot to the truck. He just wants to trail ride, beef up the transmission um, to where he can be out in the trails and not have an issue with this thing. Started having converter failure. Well, I'm gonna show y'all here in a second in this transmission teardown. So let's get back here and see what we got. Beautiful truck though, beautiful truck. I'm glad he brought it to us. Uh, He's seen us on YouTube, guys, so if you haven't yet, you're behind. Let's go check this new unit out here. Not new unit, this old unit. I think it's got like 130,000 miles on it from Oklahoma. So he is uh, four hours away from us. Easy, four hours away. We got a lot going on here. I mean, guys, we've got... Dad's building a power glide. He's building a 350. I've been building a 6L80s, 6L90s. I mean, we've really been working here at Precision Transmission to get this stuff going and to keep the uh, customers' cars rolling. So um, we're just going to get down to this thing and start tearing it apart. So we've got a stock JMBX torque converter. You know, it's not burnt or anything here. What we had is, though, the fluid is getting really discolored, but we started having um, a pump line, you could see that there was metal in the fluid, and you could just tell that our converter clutch is going out and it's starting to apply on the outer edge of the clutch versus centered. So you can see here, Cody, see here on our new converter, this is a billet, Sonex updated on the inside, BNI torque converter builds these. Um, they put the Sonex uh, updates for the converter they get them all, they do it, they send it back to us. Really nice unit. So that's a heavy duty billet single disc converter and a updated clutch. So a lot better. Sorry, I thought I had a rag on me. But hey, look, we're gonna get a little further in here. So first thing we've got, and it's really hard like always, is the lockup seal. And you run over here real quick, guys. These pocket screwdrivers are, you get like five at a time, but they whittle down very quickly. So you might get thrown away or just an accident. Oh, well, I didn't even be, wasn't able to get that off at all. I mean, it's just really hard and brittle. You can tell really flat, squared out. It's a round seal originally and green in the kit. Okay. So we're gonna get our adapter off here. We have a 6L80 instead of a 6L90. This adapter here I should have showed you is a little bit different. The 6L90 has a big beefy adapter on it because the planets and stuff are a little bit different in it. Um, but you got a 6L80 here, small adapter. It's really how you can kind of tell the difference in these units as well. Just by the outside of the adapter, you got your normal 
six figure here. Look here, or well here, we can go so here. We can go here, but like we we're saying here, this is a nice six bolt configuration and it's in a circle. Your 6L90s, they're big and long and ugly and all out of, out of form. Got a couple of bolts over here, just a little bit different unit, okay? Um, and the parts are different on the inside. So y'all guys, be sure to know what you're doing if you are switching out parts. We're gonna get our bolts out real quick. Our pump. I'm gonna leave one in. And then flip it over. That was the last one. Okay. So we're just gonna let it sit like that. Come over here and I'm gonna grab a 10 millimeter socket. Get our pan off here. So also another identification mark too, your 6L90 E-Pan will be cut off. It won't look like this. It has a real big sharp cut on the, uh, whoo, on your gasket here. Cody, I think we got some metal, my friend. He caught it just in time. It just started happening. Um, probably, he said maybe a couple hundred miles ago and he, trailered it to us he did not drive it to us so very smart for the gentleman and uh hopefully is going to save him some money <laughs> sorry almost uh got excited got fluid everywhere so our filter doesn't yeah it looks bad here oh yeah see the gold look at that none coming out of this side no metal coming out of this side as much but coming out of this side, it, just, it started pumping. The filter was stopping up. So it was a good thing that this gentleman, like I said, he stopped instantly, got a hold of someone, and we're going to get this thing built for him. So first, before we start on this valve body, we're going to come over here to our main connector. And this is the mechanism that holds our connector in. All we're going to do is press it here and pop it up. It's disconnected. Once we disconnect it, we're going to come here. We're going to grab our needle nose. We're going to pull it straight out. You might have to get on both sides and work it. You don't want to twist anything like that because it's keyed. Can you see that, Cody? We've got a key here. Yep. Okay. So you don't want to try to twist it or anything. You will not get it out. You will break it. Do not do that. Next, we're going to go to our inverted torques to get our valve body off, okay? These are the bolts that you have to take out to take the valve body off from the case. These are the main body or the main bolts. They're very long. Yeah, you hear that wind? Things getting up out there. Not supposed to be very nice this week. But we've got six main bolts that holds your bow body onto our case. Inverted hex. So we should be able to just grab this off of here, Cody, and set it to the side. Just like that. Okay, so we're going to set that to the side. We'll go back to that here shortly once we got our transmission apart. So we've got our seals here. We'll get those out of there. You can tell they were actually kind of loose. They do smash down to, to come tight, but they are really hard, not real squishy like they used to be. 130, 131,000 miles on this thing. So 
It's got quite a bit of miles on it. And luckily, uh, it even lasted that long. They don't really last that long. These units have a converter failure from the beginning. GM has not done anything about it. They just give you a new one, send you on the road, and go from there. But that's not how we do it. We like to update everything to where you're not ever, 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 ever going to have that problem again unless you just don't take care of it. All right, pump and stator, body, here we go. Okay. Let's get our pump apart here. We're hoping this thing didn't pump any big metal through the filter. If it did, you can see here on our last tear down and rebuild that, I mean, it destroyed it. When it destroys it, you have to replace this and your bell. We try to keep this stuff because one day it's gonna run out and they're gonna be modifying that stuff to uh, compromise for no aluminum being uh, found. We're already having a shortage as it is. Okay, so we're gonna get all of our bolts out. Set those to the side. All right, Cody, let's make a prayer real quick. All right. Just for this gentleman, too. Oh, man, he is a lucky dog. Can you feel that? Uh, nope. You can feel that. Cody, you feel that? It's no good. I can't on this side. Nothing on that side. Nothing over here. But it's rutted. Over here, you can feel the groove. Yep. It's no good. Too much. We would. I would never put this in a vehicle knowing that this customer is going all the way to Oklahoma City, and that's. It's just crazy to put something used. I got everything here to do it. It's just one of the things that happens to these units is the bell housing and pump. Once they start pumping metal, and you don't have an electronic failure, it's just going to keep working, 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 working until it just can't work no more, and you get this type of a failure. So he caught it quick but not quick enough. So we got our pump out. We got our little veins out here, rotor. We got our slide. I mean, slide still got the bluing on it, but you can tell it's starting eating away over here. Got some metal in it. We're gonna look here at our pin. Got some wear in our pin and spring. Our 6L80s, 6L90s, it's a little different than your 4L60, 4L65, 4L70. They've actually made the spring onto your pin so you don't lose it. Because I promise y'all probably were losing that quite often. Because that's the last thing to fall out of there. So we're going to set this to the side. We know it's no good. We'll be getting a pump, bell, and stator. I have them here in house. We just did not pull it down. So we'll be grabbing that next. All right. So we're gonna flip this over here, and the first thing we're gonna be pulling out is our 3-5 reverse clutch. And this thing is handy. Sorry guys, snap ring got the best of us trying to jump out of, our, out of the hands. You know, I don't expect a huge, huge amount of damage to this thing, which we don't like to see damage to our customers' vehicles. We really don't. The less amount of damage, the better for them, the better for us. So that doesn't look bad there, okay? And then also, like we talked, your snap rings are selective, so keep them together. I know I got a lot going on over here, but we will make sure to do that. So our next clutch we're gonna be pulling out is our one, two, three, four clutch. That's right, one, two, three, four clutch. I'll look 
look at it. Got your wave here, you see that? Which helps soften the engagement. Not too bad. You know, getting some wear on our clutch, you know, some darkness, so it was, it's getting time, you know, he caught it just in time, I mean, seriously. No sense in, you don't drive these things into the ground or just drive, okay, I'll just drive it until it quits moving. Well, you do that, you might as well start out with a different transmission. Have our planet here. We're going to have to get it really cleaned up to make sure it's okay. By the looks of it, it don't look terrible. And feeling everything. Don't feel too bad. Sun gear. It doesn't go on either way. It can go on either way. It's, it's not directional. You got a bearing. Check all your bearings. Since this thing was making some metal. We've got a plastic. Man, this thing is slippery. Ford tab washer here that our planet runs on. Just like that. So we're gonna flip this over here and our little dinky clutch right here that we have normally is a common failure too is your four, five, six clutch. Ooh. Trying to get the floor dirty. So this is a big problem out there. Overheating issues while not engaged, not big enough clutch to hold the power. They've got a lot of areas and different ways to correct this, Sonex does. So if you're doing a lot of uh, towing or just your everyday driving on the highway, they have something that helps direct the fluid um, in your hub here. I'm gonna put out, pull out that it actually directs the fluid towards the clutch when it's not engaged. So pretty cool. It's just wasted fluid that is being wasted and they're directing it back towards the vehicle or towards our clutch here to keep it cool. What I'm trying to explain. But it doesn't look bad. He said the gentleman isn't too, too hard on it. He said he just dailies it. He trail rides. He just started trail riding. Um, this past year so he wants to be able to do that later on in life but he does not plan on doing much to the vehicle so all right let's get this out of the way here okay so right here we have your uh, four, five, six clutch hub. This is what I'm talking about that they redesigned Sonex did. I'm pretty sure it's in here. You can go check out Greg's vehicle or videos at Sonex and it shows you how they direct the fluid. They drilled some circuits in here to where it helps oil that clutch while it's not on. And then also they've made this here smaller to where it has allowed a power glide clutch to be installed. And your power glide clutch is about easy eighth inch wider than this clutch. I wish I had one. We had one out earlier. I don't know what we did with it, but it makes this smaller here, which makes the surface area of the clutch bigger and uh, good to go. It, it just gets rid of that problem that they're having. So that is your four, five, six clutch hub. Okay, right here we have your one, two, three, four clutch hub. Bearing down in here. As you can see, we've got an open bearing, but this just goes down in here and it runs on that. So that's the surface that it runs on. It goes down in there. Hmm. 
Okay. So here we have our 2.6 and 3.5 reverse clutch hub. Just looking for all the bushing where, where our bushings are running, making sure everything looks really good. Teeth, where everything runs, locks into, looks good. Looks really good. Bearings looking good, feel good. We're gonna clean them up still and make sure that these things are, are what they should be. Okay, set that to the side. Now we've got our big snap ring, our case snap ring that holds in our 2.6 clutch and our low reverse clutch. And it's all there. Yeah. That thing is all there. You are not getting that thing out without those. So whoever invented those, thank you. Okay, we're going to stick that to the side. I mean, that, guys, I mean, that's a snap ring for you. And you can see here we've got a flat side and bevel. Bevel out. And you can see where our snap ring was. We want to make sure that that goes back in there that way. Okay? You don't want to sit it in there and put it a certain way. When you're going back and building it, it actually tells you in the book how to put it in there. So we'll set that to the side. So we should just be able to pull this right out. Nice and easy, maybe. Just like that. All right. So first things first is our 2.6 clutch here. Real big guy. Don't see a lot of problems with it, unless you just have a burnt piston or just a blown out piston or just a vehicle that hasn't been taken care of. Really big clutch but dark, so I mean he was using it most definite. There you go on that, that's our 2.6 clutch. And then we're gonna flip this over here and we have our low reverse clutch. We have our low reverse sprag in the center. All right, so our low reverse clutch here, guys. Yeah, you can see he's trail riding, so this is what he's really using. He's not shifting out of fourth, fifth, six. He's staying down in the low gears. Uh, your one, two, your two, three, he's staying down in those gears. So we really want to concentrate on that stuff as well to make sure that he's going to be okay while he's on his trails. So now we have here is we have our low reverse sprag it is a sprag it's not a roller clutch come right here Cody and I can show you let me get our uh, piece off of here might have to have another pair of pliers you want to be gentle with this top hat here because it can bend very easy oh yep thank you sir all right, so we just kind of look down in there. I'm not gonna take it apart because I gotta get it in the press and change everything, but I can't, I will later. Um, but this is how this thing looks. We spin to the left and we lock to the right. That's how it should go when you put it back together. So don't mess that up. You would hate to do that, I promise. That's the very first thing you put down in the transmission. So that'd be the last thing. <laughs> All right. So now we're gonna go down to our little reverse planet here. And it's all there. It's a little smaller, a lot smaller than your 6L90 planetary system. Still pretty beefy though, huh? It's all there, guys. It's all there. 
So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go in here and inspect our ring gear really good. It was circulating a little bit of metal, not a lot. Customer caught it in the nick of time um, that it didn't cause too much damage. So, you know, we're gonna go in here, check everything, clean it up, inspect it like should. Case looks good. Case bushing looks good. We'll knock that out though and get it all changed out, put a new one in it. Did you catch it in just the nick of time, Cody, or what? I believe so. Yeah. Right, the right place. Right place too, definitely. So this guy's from Oklahoma City. Here's all the parts, most of the parts. I do not have the bell and stator. We got all our bond and piston, got a transgo updated stuff that we're gonna be putting in the valve body. We've got all of our bushings. We've got the stuff to do this correctly. We've got all the pump veins. This is everything here, guys, to do it. Talk about your bushings there, Ken, about how never to knock your bushings oh. out of your, out of your Yes, sir. Your, your parts there. So there is a lot to say in these and stir uh for uh, showing us and telling us everything on these transmissions most definitely. But I do forget some things here and there because I'm still new at these videos. But what we have here, guys, this is a bushing kit for a 6L80, 6L90. But you better make sure that this bushing kit has every piece of the puzzle because it possibly could not. Just like today, let me improvise. Today, we bought a kit. We got a nice little note in here. I know y'all did not, y'all probably can't read that, but it talks about supply and demand and the part availability in these kits. We're not getting stuff in some of these kits now. So before, and it's this bearing right here, it's your one, two, it's your one, two three, four, and your three, five reverse bushing or bearing. Okay, don't knock that out if you don't have it because it's not coming in your kids. If it's good, don't change it out. Clean it up, make sure it looks good. I mean, if you gotta change it, change it. But if it's not, be sure you got one. And then same thing with our bushing kit. You gotta make sure you wanna come in here and this paper tells you all your bushings, but you gotta make sure that your bushing kit came with all the bushings because if it didn't and you knock that bushing out, you're in trouble. So. Short, long story short, don't knock out your bushings until you know that you have the right bushing. So that's one thing there as well. Anything else, sir? That's good. I think I crossed all my yep. T's, I's, did everything. Yeah. Sure, all right, guys. Well, it's getting close to the end of the day. We're going to call it a day. All right, they said I had to work longer. I forgot to do the valve body. Got a little excited, got ahead of myself. Sorry, guys. Okay. We're gonna take this thing apart here, um, piece by piece, and kind of explain some things to you at the same time. So first of all, we're gonna go and we're gonna get our detent lever off of here. This is the lever that you, well, it's not the lever, but it's the roller that you feel when you're moving the shifter, click, click, click. So y'all guys know what that is. Here, we have what's called this plug but come on there we go right here we have your neutral safety switch this is what tells what gear it's in sends it up to the dash pretty cool this is your manual valve this is what you move to get different engagements in the transmission. Here what we have is what we call the Tecum. This is what controls everything. You can build a beautiful transmission here, have it all good to go, know it works, but if you don't have this working correctly, you have nothing. So this has to work with this to make a good unit. All right, we're gonna get all our tins out real quick. Right. 
And then we're going to go to our sevens. You have two eighths here on the side. There it is. Sorry. I should have did those first. Let me stand it up so it doesn't fall. Computer, tack them, just come right off. After you unplug your speed sensors. Do that first, guys. Sorry about that. So we've got our input and output speed sensor plug. We want to disconnect that before you remove your tech em. And then we're going to, as so, like we'd say, we'd flip it over. And then we would just grab our Tecum off of there and flip it over. Check everything out here. See, look, look. See the metal? It's starting to circulate. This is a screen, which your kit comes with a new one, but we just want to make sure that this is working correctly. We'll go run some tests on it and make sure that this is hunted before we put a used one back on it. We just want to make sure our customer is back on the road and not having any issues. Where'd that seven go? Did it roll away? Probably right in front of me. Oh, thanks, Cody. Appreciate that, sir. All right. So we've got all those out now. Now we're going to flip it over. And we're going to get these out. We should just be able to lift this up nice and easy. It's got dowel pins, so you might have to give it a pry on the one of the sides here to break the seal. All right. Okay. Okay, so we have your clutch select valves here, two and three. We have a TCC regulator and your compressor regulator valve stuff here. We got your separator plate, which is stuck on there pretty good. And it's not the dowels either. It's stuck on there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Looks really good. Your biggest identification here later is this tell when you're changing some things up and going back on your rebuild. So that's big. It's important. Very important. So we've got our check balls here. I'm going to just flip this over. Just know where everything's at. We got a check ball book that shows us everything too. So we're going to pour those out and set them to the side. Then we'll clean this up. We'll ch make sure all this stuff is working correctly. We'll go back, you know, we'll work our valves, make everything, make sure everything's working good once we get it all cleaned up. You know, spitting oil at me um, and go from there. But guys, this is way better than that first one I just got done building or the last one I just got done building. So. 
I'm really happy with this one. Gonna be a really nice build. Should be a little bit easier than the last one was, most definitely. Um, probably gonna have an hour less cleaning. Okay. So. I appreciate y'all for watching. Thank you, Cody, for video. And if it wasn't for you, uh, some of these videos, we wouldn't have them. So, guys, if you liked it, please go subscribe. Thank you so much. Um, y'all guys make this possible. If it wasn't for y'all, we couldn't do it. So hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and give us a huge thumbs up if you liked it. We'll see y'all next time.